Hello, everyone. I'm your hometown station's news director and anchor, Jeff Fitzgerald. And I'm anchor and producer Holly Gaiman. The next half hour is special to us here at Hometown Stations as we are celebrating 70 years of broadcasting in West Central Ohio. We hope you enjoy the show and it brings back some wonderful memories. Where we sit today, 1424 Rice Avenue. Since 1953, that has been our address and has been the home to your hometown line of stations. So let's take a look back at the rich history of this station from its radio beginnings to television from WLOK to WIMA, to when we became WLIO, then WLIO, WOHL. We'll also take a look at the people who made this station what it is today. Names like Straker, Bratton, Clark, Haithcott, Dunster, and Coza. And we'll also look at the technical advances through the years from black and white to color, and now to digital TV era. Again, we hope you enjoy. Even though this location is primarily known as a television station, its beginning actually started in radio. In 1935, radio station WBLY AM signed on the air here at our current Rice Avenue location. Four years later, the station was bought and the call letters were changed to WLOK. That station would sign off the air forever on December 9, 1954, as Northwestern Ohio Broadcasting Corporation, the parent company of WIMA Radio, purchased and then dissolved the station. That started the beginning of the Lima television era. On Saturday, April 18th, 1953, after several months of planning, construction, and extensive technical work, Lima's first television station, WLOK-TV, Channel 73, signed on the air at 8 p.m. with a live ceremony complete with a live in-studio audience. The station was owned by Pixley Incorporated of Columbus, carrying programming from ABC, CBS, NBC, and Dumont Television. There is one name that cannot be omitted when it comes to how this station got on the air, Maurice J. Maury Lamb. Maury came to WLOK Television in 1953 and supervised the installation of the station. He was officially named Chief Engineer in 1956 and held that position until his retirement in 1984. He oversaw many of the improvements through the years, like the channel change from 73 to 35, the transformation from black and white to color, and the beginning of the satellite era. Maury also helped lay the groundwork for the installation of Cablevision into the city of Lima in the 1960s as Lima Cablevision Company, which is now Spectrum Cable. The brief era of WLOK-TV ended on December 8, 1954, when Northwestern Ohio Broadcasting Corporation acquired the station. On April 24, 1955, the call letters and channel were changed to WIMA-TV Channel 35. One of the most recognizable faces on WIMA, WLAO-TV, was Lima native Easter Straker. Her show, Easter's Parade, kept viewers informed on local events from 1955 to 1984 on her living room of the air. And one of the most popular segments of her show was the birthday chair, a throne on which children would sit while being interviewed by Easter and assisted by Chuck Osborne or George Dunster. As a special treat, they would be able to get to stick their hand into the penny jar for a handful of pennies and a sucker. After Easter retired, the birthday chair was donated to the Allen County Museum, where it remains today. Among some of her guests were some noteworthy celebrities, such as Lyman natives Phyllis Diller and Hugh Downs, Eleanor Roosevelt, Henny Youngman, and the Three Stooges. Easter was the driving force behind the Teddy Bear Fund, which still provides teddy bears to children in Allen County hospitals. Easter returned to radio in 1982, hosting a show on WLSR-FM. She stayed with WIO until December 28, 1984, when her last TV show aired. Easter had a career lasted over 50 years. The Easter Straker Scholarship Fund was set up in her honor at Ohio Northern University, established by the community and her friends. Local children's shows were a big part of WIMA, WLIO-TV during the late 1950s and through the early 1970s. From 1957 to 1963, Sam Fitzsimmons hosted a show called For Kids Only, a half-hour show which aired weekday afternoons. Sam would always open the show by saying, Welcome to the big book of fun things to do for kids only. The set consisted of an actual book that he stepped out of and had six movable pages. One of the main characters on the show was a puppet named Gilly Galoob. The show was sponsored by Mac Camera Store. Charlie's Cartoon Clubhouse aired weekday afternoons from 1963 to 1967. Charlie, played by Chuck Osborne, and Bobo the Clown, played by Denny First, entertained kids around Lima Land from Charlie's Cartoon Clubhouse. At the end of each show, Charlie would always close by saying, have a lot of fun, do a lot of things, but whatever you do, do the best you can. That's all people can ask. The picture that came from the studio from 1957 to 1968 came from RCTK11 black and white studio cameras. They were state of the art for that time. 
The cameras would be used until early 1968 when they were replaced with two Marconi 5 Color Studio cameras. In March 1958, the station went on air with greatly increased power thanks to the installation of a new transmitter. At that time, it made WIMA-TV one of the most powerful UHF stations in the United States, expanding from a 20-mile radius to a radius of 40 miles. It provided many households in West Central Ohio their first local news and entertainment from a local television station. When this transmitter was installed, the tower height was 350 feet. In 1958, Color Network programming arrived at Lima's Good Neighbor Station. Shows like The Steve Allen Show, Dinah Shore Chevy Show, and The Perry Como Show were NBC shows broadcast in color. WIMA wouldn't start airing local programming in color until 1968, when color studio cameras and film equipment were used. In early 1961, the station took a step forward when they acquired their first videotape machine. This machine used reels of videotape that were two inches in width and threaded into a machine that resembled a reel-to-reel -reel recorder. The machine would be used to air syndicated programs as well as local commercials. In March of 1964, the station began construction of a new 550-foot tower. This tower replaced the original 350-foot one and is still partially in use today. A Lima television first occurred on June 9th of 1965 when a live program from the Allen County Fairgrounds as part of a statewide hookup aired. The telecast was part of a Republican Party salute to Ray Bliss that was being held in eight Ohio cities at the time, including Cincinnati, Cleveland, Columbus, Toledo, and Lima. Illinois Senator Charles Percy was the guest speaker here in Lima. Other featured speakers in this program included four past or future presidents, Dwight D. Eisenhower in Cleveland, Richard Nixon in Columbus, Gerald Ford in Canton, and Ronald Reagan in Cincinnati. The remote was sent by microwave from the fairgrounds to Columbus and then sent out across the state. Another part of our history and probably one of the station's most defining moments when it provided live coverage with the help of NBC from the Wapakoneta at a home of Stephen and Viola Armstrong, the parents of astronaut Neil Armstrong during the Apollo 11 moon landing in July of 1969. The engineering department made a makeshift two-camera remote unit, which was out of the back of a moving van, and one of the cameras was mounted on a lift. The station provided coverage to all three networks plus worldwide satellite. A makeshift tower made up of scaffolding was constructed in the backyard of the Armstrong home and was used to relay the signal to Botkins, and from there it was relayed to New York City. In all, NBC televised over 60 hours of coverage, including 31 hours nonstop during the period of July 20th to the 21st, and part of that coverage originated from Wapakoneta. A major change in the Lima radio and television scene occurred on September 1st, 1971, when WIMA Radio and WIMA Television were officially split up. With the sale to Lima Broadcasting Corporation, WIMA TV signed on as WLIO TV. In 1972, WLIO was sold for $1.5 million to 75% majority owner, the Toledo Blade. It would remain that way until 1982 when Blade Communications bought out Midwestern Broadcasting Company, becoming the sole owner. Now known as Block Communications, it remains our parent company to this day. From 1971 to 1976, Charles Chuck Osborne was the general manager of WLIO. Chuck started in 1960 as a staff announcer and hosted Charlie's Cartoon Clubhouse, plus he was Easter Strikers co-host on Easter's Parade from 1960 to 1975. When he left in 1976, Chuck became part owner of Krauss Lumber Company and later went on to head up the Travel and Tourism Department at the University of Northwestern Ohio. Chuck died in 2003. James C. Dages was named to succeed Osborne in 1976. Jim was a graduate of Yale University and before coming to Lima had been employed by WWJ-TV in Detroit. He was active in the community and served as President General Manager until his death in May of 1995. Bruce A. Opperman was named President General Manager in 1995 to succeed Jim Dages. Bruce started in 1966 and served in several different capacities, including General Sales Manager until his promotion. A native of St. Mary's, Bruce retired in September of 2009, ending an era of 43 years of service to both WIMA-TV and WLIO-TV. In the fall of 2009, Kevin C. Creamer became President General Manager of WLIO-WOHL, succeeding Opperman. Born in West Virginia, Kevin grew up in Columbus and is a graduate of Miami of Ohio University. He made Lima his home in 1983. Kevin was also General Sales Manager prior to being named GM and continues as our General Manager today. From 1975 to 2002, the station became known for the live telethon it aired for St. Jude Children's Research Hospital in Memphis, Tennessee. 
Rick Bratton served as the host and producer for the annual event. In 1975, the first telethon aired from the WLIO studios. From 1976 to 1999, it originated from the Lima Mall before moving to the Veterans Memorial Civic and Convention Center in 2000. Among the celebrities who came to Lima for the annual event, it included actor and Rick's frequent co-host, David Bailey. In 1984, to celebrate the 10th annual telethon, entertainer and St. Jude founder Danny Thomas came to Lima to co-host with Rick. The telethon raised over $267,500. Add that to the total of the nine previous telethons, and more than $1 million had been raised for St. Jude. We have covered a lot of high-level politicians over the years that came to Lima. On October 12, 1984, WLIO aired live coverage of the Lima portion of President Reagan's Heartland Special Whistle Stop Tour through Western Ohio, which was held here near the Amtrak station. In May of 1987, with the assistance of WKYC TV, NBC, and Cleveland, a segment on NBC's Meet the Press was originated by satellite from the WLIO studios. Indiana Senator Richard Luger, who was in the area to deliver the commencement address at Ohio Northern University, was interviewed from our studio. In April 1988, TV35 aired a live rally for Vice President, soon to be President, George H.W. Bush at the Veterans Memorial Civic and Convention Center. This was the first remote for our new electronic news gathering truck. The crew consisted of camera operators Philip Thomas and A.J. Shirelds, director, technical director Dennis Lamb, and chief engineer Fred Vobie. In October 1996, TV35 carried a live rally for Republican presidential candidate Robert Dole, again from the Civic Center downtown. In October 2000, the station aired live coverage of a political rally from the steps of Memorial Hall as then Republican vice presidential candidate Dick Cheney came to Lima campaigning for presidential candidate George W. Bush. Coverage of President George W. Bush's visit and speech at the Lima Army tank plant was aired live in April of 2003. This was the first time a sitting president made a non-campaign appearance in Lima. Also accompanying the president to Lima was NBC Nightly News anchor Tom Brokaw. In 2008, Senator Joe Biden, vice presidential candidate with Democratic presidential candidate Barack Obama, came to Lima on a campaign stop to Lima Senior High School. Later in August, during that campaign, Obama made a quick visit to St. Luke's Lutheran Church. Obama came back to Lima in 2012 as president and spoke at Lima Senior High School. President Donald J. Trump came to Lima in 2019, stopping at the Joint Systems Manufacturing Center. He took a tour and delivered a speech. In 1979, after several months of work, WLIO took to the air with a new RCA transmitter. This transmitter actually was pulled out of WPTD-TV in Dayton. When it was brought to Lima, it was completely rebuilt and updated. So when it went on the air, it was one of the most modern transmitters in use. In 1979, the FCC allowed WLAO to increase power expanding coverage area by approximately 27%. In 1986, power was increased again. The transmitter was completely rebuilt in August of 1995. With the transition from analog to digital television, the transmitter was shut down for the last time on June 12, 2009 ending a 30-year run of service. After over 33 years of use, the original WLOK antenna finally came down in 1986, and in its place, a new antenna was installed. Around-the-clock programming began on WLIO on March 4, 1996. Other than shutting the transmitter down one night a month for maintenance, programming airs 24-7. On November 18, 2002, a new era of television broadcasting began as WLIO-DT Channel 8.1 took to the air. We were one of the first stations in West Central Ohio to transmit a digital signal. In June of 2005, WLIO DTA.1 began broadcasting NBC programs in its new high-definition format. Programs such as The Today Show, NBC Nightly News, Law & Order, Tonight Show, and Late Night were now in high definition. A major acquisition happened in 2009 with FCC approval. It was announced that Block Communications had purchased TV67 Incorporated, which included stations WOHL Fox, WLMO CBS, WLQP ABC, and WFND America One. The Fox network was moved to WLAO Digital Channel 8.2. Then in August of that year, ABC and CBS began airing on our second digital station, WOHL Channel 35. This made WLIO WOHL the first, and at the time, the only operation in the country that had all four of the major networks operating out of one facility. A few other stations have since joined this group. Analog TV did come to an end. On June 12, 2009, WLIO Analog Channel 35 
signed off the air for the final time. Chief Engineer Fred Vobe shut down the transmitter and with that ended a span of 54 years of broadcasting on analog. WLIO TV now solely transmits on digital channel 8. Later in November, after much work and technical updates, your hometown stations began airing all newscasts in high definition. Standard definition, SD, was history with the flip of a switch. With all the other changes, in 2013, our production room, where video and audio is played out during our newscast, underwent a months-long state-of-the-art changeover. The tape days are long gone, and all video runs through a computer. A new audio board was installed, along with a new switcher. The renovated production room gives staff some of the finest equipment in the industry to work on. Technology changes almost overnight, and your hometown station strives to keep up with those changes to bring you, the viewer, the finest quality in news, weather, sports, commercials, and programming. In August of 2018, construction started at a new transmitter site located on St. Clair Street on Lima's west side. The project involved building a new 600-foot tower and combined stacked antenna with WOHL, and that would move WHL from channel 35 to channel 15. Just about a year later, in July 2019, WLIO began broadcasting from that new site, moving its signal from 1424 Rice Avenue to St. Clair Street, moving to channel 8 with 40,000 watts circular polarization. In February 2020, our Rice Avenue neighbors and many others noticed the top 140 feet of tower was removed, bringing our 500-foot tower to its current height of 360 feet. That tower is still used today as a relay point to the new tower out on St. Clair Street. Well, we had a lot of on-air talent pass through the studios at your hometown stations, just too many to name, but we wanted to highlight some of the names and faces that you certainly remember. You've already heard about Easter Strikers time here, and we've mentioned Rick Bratton hosted and produced the 27 years of the St. Jude Children's Hospital Telethon. Rick started at WIMA-TV in 1967 and had worked at various positions through the years, including news reporter, weatherman, and staff announcer. From 1969 to 2002, his talk show, The Rick Bratton Show, was a Sunday night fixture. Rick now hosts a nationally syndicated radio show, This Week in America, based out of Sebastian, Florida. Another personality that appeared on WLIO was Antel Haithcock. Antel joined TV 35 in 1974 as a member of the engineering department, where she worked as a camera operator and projectionist. She later joined the news department as a weather specialist and also hosted a weekly Sunday morning show named A Gospel Sound. From 1982 to 2002, she also served as promotions director for TV 35. Antel died in June of 2010. Well, Rick and Antel had their own shows, but most of the on-air personalities you'll remember were in news, weather, and sports. Sports director Scott Clark anchored the 6 and 11 p.m. News Journal. Scott, a graduate of Lima Senior, started at TV 35 in 1976 and became sports director in January of 1977, succeeding Rob Bromley. Scott was here until 1978 when he moved on to Toledo, then to Cleveland, Washington, D.C., and then he made the move to WABC-TV in New York City. Scott was their primary sports anchor in the number one TV market in the country. Scott is now retired and spends much of his time in the Carolinas. Michael Regai was a reporter, weekend sports anchor for WLIO from 1980 to 1982. From here, he went to WNWO-TV in Toledo and then on to Cleveland in 1983. In 1986, he returned to Toledo at WTVG-TV and remained there until 1991 when he went to work for Fox Sports Ohio where he did play-by-play -play for the NBA's Cleveland Cavaliers from 1991 to 2006. Regai has also done play-by-play -play for baseball's Baltimore Orioles. Michael is still busy these days doing play-by-play -play for the Ohio High School Athletic Association State Football and Basketball Tournaments along with Mid-American Conference Football and Basketball. Lori Omnis was a reporter, anchor, producer at WLAO from 1971 to 2005. At one time or another, she anchored every newscast here. She is the reason the station has first edition program, which kicked off in late January 1996. After WLAO, Lori went on to work at NBC affiliate WCMH in Columbus as the assignment editor. Lori died in November of 2014. George Dunster was my mentor and the person who hired me. George became news director at WLIO in 1973 and later became vice president of Lima Communications Corporation. He was Easter's last sidekick as he co-hosted Easter's parade from 1975 to 1983 when Easter retired from TV. He then produced and anchored the Midday Report, which is now Noon Edition. George retired from WLIO in 1999 but remained active in productions at the Encore Theater and he worked at the Veterans Memorial Civic and Convention Center. George died in October of 2021. 
My husband, Vince Coza, started as news reporter and weekend sports anchor. He became sports director in 1981 and held that position until 2007. The Coz was known for his passion for local sports and for a player being on fire during his highlights. One of the highlights of his time on TV was doing the play-by-play -play call of Lima Senior's 1996 State Football Championship. Vince was inducted into the Ohio AP Broadcast Hall of Fame in 2007. Vince moved on into radio for 10 years, continuing that love of play-by-play -play for high school football and basketball games, while also hosting a weekday and Saturday morning radio talk show, Sports Talk with Coza. Vince died in January of 2020. In my sidekick for this show, Holly Gaiman started at the station in 1985. As many know, she was married to Vince Coza, creating a formidable local media team. Holly started as a reporter and weekday weather specialist for the 6 and 11 o'clock newscast. For 30 years, she has been the anchor of the Midday Report, now Noon Edition, and as of late, co-anchors the First Edition program. Her career highlights include interviews with Lyman Ada's Phyllis Diller and Hugh Downs. Holly was inducted into the AP Broadcast Hall of Fame, joining Vince in 2018. My friend and co-host Jeff Fitzgerald was born and raised in Lima. He started at your hometown stations in the fall of 1984. As a reporter, Jeff broke many local stories and was a trusted journalist in the community. For more than 30 years, Fitz has been the weekday 6 p.m. co-anchor. He was inducted into the Associated Press Ohio Broadcasters Hall of Fame in 2012. In May of 2013, he became news director and in 2021 was named vice president at Lima Communications Corporation. He continues to serve in those roles today. And that is just a look at some of the people that made the station what it is today. Changing gears. Over the years, the station has gone through many changes. Some of these changes include what we look like on the air. Let's take a look down memory lane at some of the news sets. Let's see if you remember these. In 2019, a major renovation of the studio began, headed by maintenance manager Kevin Hain, production manager Jason Johns, who took over when his dad Terry left after retirement. New flooring, lighting, and a new state-of-the-art set. The weather center was moved into the studio from the newsroom so live weather reports and weathercasts could be done in studio. A separate interview set was put in the studio, along with a separate area for our sports team to do football and hoops Friday night. As of today, because of the 2020 start of the COVID-19 pandemic, the full possibilities of our set have yet to be achieved. It is an ongoing work in progress with more exciting changes to come. What the public doesn't see on the air are work areas. In 2016, half of our newsroom was gutted and a total renovation took place. New ceiling, new flooring, new desks, new desktop computers, a whole new work environment for reporters, anchors, and producers. And as we got set to start the renovation of the other half of the newsroom, the pandemic hits, putting things on hold. That side of the newsroom was completed after some delay in late 2020. A wall that cut the room in half was removed. Like the first half of the newsroom, everything is new, giving the staff a brand new work area and much more space. Another in-house renovation project delayed by the pandemic was the consolidation of our sales team. Housed in separate rooms for years, a wall was removed, water cooler moved, closet eliminated, and when all is said and done, your hometown station sales team is united with general sales manager Michelle Kirkendall in a brand new workspace. 
And while we are talking about history, let's take a look at a commercial from a business that's a longtime advertiser with us and has been around for more than 70 years. Well, that was quite a show. 70 years of history here at WLIO in Lima, and uh, we talked about it, Holly. You and I have seen more than half of it. Which, that doesn't sound right, but we have. We it's have. It's so weird. A lot of changes. A lot of changes in the newsroom. Remember, we started out on typewriter. We started out on typewriter. The newsroom was full of noise, and we had Carbon scripts. Carbon five scripts papers. after that five-ply paper. Mm -hmm. Now uh, it's computer. What a piece of cake. Well, yeah, and we switched from the typewriters to the computers. They put these big things on our desk, big, thick things, and we were wondering, what are these? And they were computers, and now it's amazing how small everything is with the right, flat screens. Exactly. And Speaking of small, the changes we've seen in tapes. I mean, yeah. We used to lug around a camera and the recorder, and it was connected by a cord. That's right. Now we do everything on computer, including our editing. And we started out with these big three-quarter inch tapes back when we started. That went in a recorder. Right, and you had to carry that around. Lugged and it all around. Luckily, then they started making, technology made some changes, and we went from this to a DVC Pro Tape, much smaller. Still, the camera was bigger with those. Yes, it was. And, and now, now we're on that. They probably SD can't even card. see that little thing. Yeah, but really. It's just a little SD card, and that's what we pop into the... Cameras the, are smaller now. Pop it out with the video on it, pop it in the, the edit bays in our computers, and Isn't it amazing? just bring all the video down to a timeline, and it is amazing, the changes. I love editing now. I mean, yeah, you so know. much. You can, you can correct mistakes a lot easier. Oh, yeah. A lot easier definitely. than you did tape to tape. And but. speaking of editing, remember there was... Film. I mean, back in the day when Vince first started football and stuff, they had right. to come back so early because they as, had to edit the film together. Just as we were getting started, they only could cover a couple games at a time. We covered 10, 12, 15 now, but they had to come back. And you think about film, it was like a, your movie reel. It was reel to reel, and uh, they had to come back Ridiculous. and splice that all together. But there were so many big machines and yeah. master control and stuff to run all Axel, this stuff, all uh, those big yeah, tapes, tapes, two inches. And there were, and there were difficulties with tapes because tapes break or tapes oh, crinkled up. So frustrating when they so crinkled up and stick it in the machine and it'd eat it and you're like, that's my story. <laughs> and we see all those equipment changes. but And we talked about a number of the high profile folks yeah. in the show, but we've seen a lot of people come oh through gosh, too. Oh my gosh, Jeff, could we even count the we amount can't. of people there that are, we've gone through? There are through? WLIO alums all over the country. I talk about We're it all the time. We're a perfect training ground. Yes. And, you know, some of us stay, which we love the area, that's why. But this is there's home so for many us. people to be proud of that have gone out and about right. and we, stay in touch with. I have alums, and I do the hiring now in news. We have people in Texas and all the stations in Ohio and Illinois and Florida and New York. They're, they're scared. They're scattered everywhere. Speaking of the staff, remember we were crunched into one little room, there was like seven of us, and that was the whole new staff. There have been interchanges in this building because we, well, there was like seven of us sharing five desks in a little people room. people smoked at that time? Ugh, it, was it was terrible. terrible. <laughs> it was terrible. And now we have much more space. The room where we were once in news is now the whole major renovation we talked about earlier. With the, the, show, sales, yeah. the sales department is now in two rooms and it's amazing so we've, we've grown so we hope we hope you enjoyed this half an hour and this and in this show from 1953 on to 2023 and uh, 70 years of great memories 70 years of great memories there'll be more and uh we had a good time putting it together so we again hope you enjoyed it and thank you for joining us